Hey there, third grade mathematicians. It's Mr. Tang here, welcoming you back for another week of math here on BCPS TV. Our lesson for this week focuses on some geometry standards, more specifically, quadrilaterals. Do you already know what that means? Anyway, this lesson is the first lesson for the week of May 25th to May 29th. So today we will be classifying shapes, including quadrilaterals, in different ways by analyzing and describing similarities and differences to understand why shapes are named the way they are. Now this is a very wordy objective, so let's go ahead and take a second to break this down. Our what for today is that we will be classifying shapes, primarily focusing on quadrilaterals, taking a look at how they all differ. And we're gonna do that by analyzing and describing how these shapes are similar and how they are different. And the reason why we're doing this is so that we can better understand why shapes are named the way they are based on how we see them and the attributes that they have. Next, let's take a look at all four of these images. Pick one and explain why it doesn't belong. There's no right or wrong answer as long as you can justify your answer. So take a second and explain why one of the shapes doesn't belong with the other three. Let's go to our friends at Pearson to learn about attributes of quadrilaterals and how we use those attributes to name them. If you're rewatching this video from home on Schoology, remember to log into Pearson to view the video assigned to you by your teacher. What are some attributes of quadrilaterals? How can you describe quadrilaterals? Let's find out. Remember, a polygon is a closed shape that has only straight sides. Why is a polygon not a circle? A circle is a closed shape, but it does not have straight sides. So, it is not a polygon. A quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides and four angles. An angle is formed when two sides of a polygon meet. The point where two sides meet is a vertex. What shapes do you see in the classroom that look like quadrilaterals? I know it's been a long time since we've been in our classrooms. So think about the shapes that you see in your house or your neighborhood or anywhere around you. A window, the door, and the top of a desk all look like quadrilaterals. Some quadrilaterals have special names. Why are all of these shapes quadrilaterals? They are all polygons with four sides and four angles. A trapezoid has exactly one pair of parallel sides or sides that never cross. A parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides. What does it mean to say that there are two pairs of parallel sides? It means that there are two sets of opposite sides and those sides never cross. In a parallelogram, opposite sides are the same length Opposite angles are the same size. A rectangle has four right angles, or square corners. A rectangle is a special parallelogram. That means any rectangle is also a parallelogram. A rhombus has all sides the same length. A rhombus is a special parallelogram. A square has four right angles and all sides the same length. A square is a special parallelogram. Why is a square also a rhombus? A square is also a rhombus because both a square and a rhombus are special parallelograms with all sides the same length.
Now you know how to use attributes to describe quadrilaterals. Now that we know how to describe quadrilaterals, let's move on to learn more about how we can use the attributes from the last video to analyze and compare quadrilaterals. How can you analyze and compare shapes? What are different ways you can classify these quadrilaterals? How do you know all the shapes are quadrilaterals? All the shapes have four sides, so they are quadrilaterals. The shapes also have differences, so you can classify them into smaller groups. Let's see what the groups are. Shapes B, D, E, F, and G are also parallelograms. Each has two pairs of parallel sides. Why are shapes A, C, H, and I not parallelograms? Shapes A, C and I have no pairs of parallel sides. Shape H has one pair of parallel sides. Shapes D, E, and G are also rectangles. Each has four right angles. Shapes B and D are parallelograms that are also rhombuses. Each has four equal sides. Shape D is a square and is in every group. It is a quadrilateral, a parallelogram, a rectangle, and a rhombus. Why is the square also a parallelogram? Squares have two pairs of parallel sides, so they are also parallelograms. Notice that all squares are rhombuses but not all rhombuses are squares. Shape B is a rhombus, but not a square, because it does not have four right angles. Now you know how to analyze and compare shapes. As we learned today, we name shapes based on the specific attributes that they have. Many shapes share similar attributes and fall under the same category. All shapes with four sides are called quadrilaterals. Quad means four, so quadrilaterals must have four sides. However, many shapes can be named as quadrilaterals, so we classify them using their specific similarities and differences. What kinds of quadrilaterals do you remember? Let's go through some of the more common ones so that we can review what we learned today. What do you think this one is? It's a parallelogram. How would you describe this quadrilateral? Parallelograms have two pairs of parallel sides. The opposite sides are the same length, and the opposite angles are also the same size. Let's take a look at our next quadrilateral. What do you think it is? It's a rectangle. How would you describe it? Rectangles have four right angles or square corners, a rectangle is a special kind of parallelogram. Let's take a look at our next quadrilateral. What do you think this one is? It's a rhombus. How would you describe it?
All sides are the same length. A rhombus is a special parallelogram. Let's take a look at our next quadrilateral. What do you think this one is? It's a square. How would you describe this one? Squares have four right angles and all the sides are the same length. A square is a special parallelogram. A square pretty much fits in many different categories that we've talked about today. It's technically a rhombus, a rectangle, a parallelogram, which are all quadrilaterals. Let's take a look at one more quadrilateral. What do you think this one is? It's a trapezoid. Now, how would you describe this one? Trapezoids have at least one pair of parallel sides. Way to go, boys and girls. Now it's your turn. Complete the quick check 15-3 assigned to you by your teacher in Pearson, where you'll see questions like this. Which polygon has at least one pair of parallel sides but are not parallelograms. Choose all that apply. Or what attributes do all four polygons have? Choose all that apply. When you finish that and you're feeling confident and ready, move on to the show what you know section so you can complete your formative assessment. There you will find similar questions to those that we reviewed today. When you finish that, Check out the additional resources page for more practice and review. There, you will find a math tools activity along with a cool pattern shapes app on the Math Learning Center. As a reminder, if you have access, you should be completing six to eight Dreambox lessons a week. You must first sign into BCPS1 using your own username and password, then access Dreambox through the instructional and productivity tools icon. Well, boys and girls, that's all for us today. You guys did a great job. And until next week, be sure to stay safe, wash those hands, and do the math.